I'm Dr. Katie Newmeyer. I'm a practicing pediatric intensivist in the United States Army, and this is Med School Insider's Why I Did. In pediatric critical care, we take care of the sickest of the sick kids. We take care of people as young as babies all the way up to adolescents. They could be as severe as requiring a ventilator to something as simple as close monitoring for labs and fluid. I was first exposed to the medical field in high school when I went on a trip for students interested in healthcare. On this trip, we got to see medicine in action in a lot of different ways. We went to an osteopathic medical school, an allopathic medical school. We got to visit nursing um, in different specialties, and we saw other allied healthcare professionals as well. I knew that I wanted to be a doctor early in high school. I loved the sciences, but I also loved interacting with people, especially kids. So they're a naive, vulnerable population, and I love working with them. In my undergraduate, I studied chemistry. I knew early on I was interested in medicine, so I did take a pre-med track, but I was at a smaller school that didn't necessarily have that, so I focused on chemistry and biology classes. I also explored teaching as a career path, but ultimately I liked the rush of taking care of patients and their greatest moment of need, and so being able to help them as individuals is what drew me to medicine. During the process of applying to medical school, it's it was stressful, just like it is for everyone. Their applications cost a lot of money, it's a lot of paperwork, and then finally you get that letter of acceptance and you're relieved that you have a spot to start in school. But then the next biggest stressor for me was how was I going to pay for medical school? So I started to explore different options for scholarships. At the time, there was not a lot available other than the military scholarships through the Health Profession Scholarship Program. This is more commonly known as HPSP. So I did my initial research. I looked at the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy just because I did not have a family bias for which branch I'd be most interested in. I was nervous to talk to a healthcare recruiter, uh, so I wanted to arm myself with the knowledge before I interacted with them to make sure I was making the most informed decision. After I did my own research, ironically, a few days later, there was an Army healthcare recruiter at my school. Uh, fortunately, they shared the same information that I researched on my own, and I felt very comfortable moving forward with the process since this would result in a way to me to, for me to graduate med school debt-free. For the HPSP program, my school tuition was paid in full by the Army. Additionally, I received a monthly stipend of around $2,600 to help offset my monthly cost, which made a huge difference in terms of my stress during medical school. Additionally, for the four-year scholarship, you're eligible for a $20,000 $20, signing bonus, which helped me purchase my first car going into medical school. In return for the Army, I owe them my time as a physician after residency. So I did my pediatric residency at Madigan Army Medical Center in Tacoma, Washington, and trained as a pediatric resident there for three years. Then for a pediatric critical care fellowship, the Army needs PICU docs because they have PICUs, but they don't have their own training program. So they sponsored me to go to a civilian program of my choosing that I was ultimately accepted to. I attended the University of Utah and spent three years there training as a civilian. Again, just like my civilian peers, I was taking care of patients, had the same study obligations, was able to participate in research and live a normal life as a fellow. Once I was complete with that, I returned to the Army to start my payback for them. The standard payback for the HPSP program is four years or the length of your residency if it's longer than four years. Additionally, for me, since I did a civilian sponsored fellowship that was three years long, that added three years to my total commitment. So for participating in HPSB and a civilian sponsored fellowship, I owed a total of seven years. I knew going into medical school that I was interested in pediatrics. I really love taking care of kids. I initially thought I was gonna be an outpatient general pediatrician, performing well visits and seeing kids when they're fun and happy. However, halfway through residency, I realized I really liked the inpatient environment. I liked being on the ward and taking care of kids that were more ill. And then at the end of my second year, I went to a PICU rotation and I loved being in the PICU. The nurses taught me a lot. The attendings really loved their job as well. And the biggest thing for me was taking care of patients and their families in the hardest time of their life where their child was critically ill and being able to support them through that time. The transition to residency was actually easier than I thought it would be. Being in the hospital and taking care of patients felt more fulfilling than just being in school and taking tests. 
The biggest difference was that it was an increased level of responsibility. Even my first time writing Tylenol, I double, triple checked the order even though it was a simple medication. My favorite part of working in the pediatric critical care unit is kids get better relatively quickly. They're admitted, they can be really sick. We perform some interventions, sometimes they're simple, sometimes they're more complex, but kids usually turn the corner pretty quick. And so you can see the fruits of your effort and see that how relieved their family is when they get to leave the intensive care unit. The hardest parts of working in the pediatric uh, intensive care unit are exactly what you think they'd be. Often kids are so sick, they're gonna have long-term deficits from an injury they experience, whether it be a uh, traumatic injury or a more severe illness, or sometimes there are kids that don't even survive. And being with their families in that moment is challenging, um, but rewarding in the long run. If I had to choose another specialty, I would still stay in pediatrics, uh, but I would probably do pediatric pulmonology. I love pulmonary physiology, and so I'd still get to be involved with that, but potentially in a less intense environment than the ICU. Knowing what I know now as an attending physician, looking back, I wish I had enjoyed each step of it a little better. In med school, all I wanted was to get through the next test and for med school to end and move on to residency. But then once I got to residency, I was wishing the time away as well. Same thing with fellowship. It didn't necessarily get any easier or any better with time, and so I wish I had just enjoyed the ride a little bit better. Students that would be a good fit for working in the pediatric intensive care unit are students that really like a lot of variety in the patients they're taking care of. Also, to work in the PICU, it takes somebody that's pretty resilient and can handle dealing with suboptimal outcomes in the pediatric population. The Army HPSP program could be a good fit for a student that's interested in really any specialty. Often people think of the Army as emergency medicine or trauma surgery, but even me, a pediatric intensivist, is in the Army. So we offer a breadth of opportunities for residency training. In terms of after residency training, opportunities that are in the Army that I have really loved are all the opportunities for leadership development and a sense of adventure. If you want to live in a bunch of different places, you have the opportunity to do so. However, if you're interested in staying somewhere longer, there are career tracks that can result in you being in a location for a longer period of time. For medical students interested in working in the PICU, I would recommend ensuring that you have enough experience in the PICU to ensure it's right for you. So set up more than one PICU rotation to get a variety of experiences, ideally at different locations, to see what it is like to work in that field at different places places. My advice to pre-medical students who are interested in Army medicine is to apply for the scholarship simultaneously while applying to medical school. You don't have to have a letter of acceptance yet to be eligible for the scholarship. You can start the process at the same time. For first-year medical students, the Army also offers a three-year health profession scholarship program, so you're still eligible to apply if you're interested in Army medicine. Being in Army medicine, I address a lot of misperceptions about what it's like to be a doctor in the Army. Often people think you have to go to basic training. Our initial training is actually different and it's not to that same level of intensity and it focuses more on army medicine. Additionally, often people think you have to live on an army post when you don't have to. You have the option to live wherever you want. You don't have to shop at the commissary or the PX. When you're not at work, really you're just like everybody else. And really when you're at work, the only difference is you get to wear, you're wearing your uniform in and out of the hospital and you're taking care of a really unique patient population who either they themselves or someone in their family has sacrificed their time to serve their country. If you're interested in learning more about Army medicine, go to goarmy.com forward slash amed. And that's why I'm an Army pediatric intensivist. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't already.